Questions of you? Atmanamaste, Ramit. Atmanamaste. <laughs> so, so, just wait. Where do I go? Start live stream. I think it's 6.30. So welcome, Atma Namaste. Uh, Sumi will not be able to join us today. She is preoccupied. So today what we're gonna do is we're just gonna finish up the chapter. Anyway, I had a uh, lot of stuff to talk about uh, with this chapter. Uh, and we'll probably end early because I don't want to start Kundalini without her, but because the next chapter, chapter 12, we will we'll go through it. But it is um, it's basically a summary of all the discussions we've, had over the past few weeks. Okay, what did I do? All right, All right shall we uh, invoke for divine blessings? Let me just mute everyone. All right, just relax. Just relax, inhale and exhale slowly and comfortably. Connect your tongue to your palate. Be of your whole body. Be of your area around your heart. Just relax. Inhale slowly, simultaneously. Be of your heart. Hold your breath. Be of your heart. Exhale slowly, simultaneously while exhaling. Be of your heart. Hold your breath. Be of your heart. Be of your heart. Inhale. Simultaneously. Be of your heart. Hold your breath, be of your heart, exhale. Simultaneously, be of your heart. Hold your breath, be of your heart, inhale one last time. Be of your heart, hold your breath, be of your heart, exhale. Be of your heart. Now, if you feel something pleasant in your heart, send this to the top of your head, to the center on top of your head, your crown. Be of your crown. Inhale slowly. Simultaneously, be of your crown while inhaling. Hold your breath, be of your crown. Exhale slowly, be of your crown and your entire spine. Hold your breath, be of your crown. Inhale slowly. Be of your crown. Hold your breath, be of your crown, your spine, and exhale slowly. Be of your spine, your whole body. Let's invoke for divine blessings. To the divine supreme God, to the divine father, to the divine mother, we humbly invoke for your priceless blessings. We invoke for divine light, for divine love, for divine guidance, for divine help and protection. We invoke for healing energy. We invoke for wisdom, for discernment, for understanding. We invoke for the ability to uh, comprehend these deep teachings and utilize it to improve ourselves and those around us. We thank you. To I will invoke to my teacher, you invoke to yours, to my beloved respected teacher, Atma Masa Chokoksui, to Maha Atma Maha Guruji Meiling, to all the Maha Atmas, to all the holy gurus, to all the holy saints, archangels, holy angels, beings of light, spiritual helpers, especially to the angels of education, to Lord Maitreya, to the angels of love, the angels of learning, we humbly invoke for your presence. To the angels, of course, of technology, we humbly invoke for your presence, for your guidance, for your help, for your protection, and thank you for the energy. With thanks and in full faith, we thank you. All right. So, uh, it's just me today. And uh, we will start with chapter, we will complete chapter 11. 
Okay, so consequently, people who are near one another are able to absorb each other's etheric emanations. We have uh, spoken enough about the discharge. So we'll go to the final page of the chapter, page 52. Uh, the radiation of etheric matter is strongest from the ends of the fingers and the toes. Hence the importance of scrupulous cleanliness in these parts of the body. Um, a person with dirt under the fingernails, for example, is continually pouring forth a stream of unhealthy influence into the etheric world. Now, there are a few key words here. Uh, the last line is influence. So that means that not only are you emanating it out, that energy will influence other people, positively or negatively. In this connotation, uh, since it's unhealthy, uh, it is a negative, um, negative um, implication. I don't know whether you've experienced this, but as you get more sensitive to energy, if you don't cut your toenails or your fingernails, your body starts to feel heavy. Have you noticed that? Uh, I'm not sure whether you guys noticed it. Like um, uh, before I never really, uh, I did, we did practice hygiene, but I would never really notice any difference. But as uh, I would cut my toenails, for example, um, after cutting the toenails, is feel, your, 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 your legs, your body feels lighter. I'm not sure whether you uh, have experienced that, but I've experienced this. Uh, with, with regards to the radiation of etheric matter, uh, strongest from the ends to the toes. This is what, uh, this is what um, one level of truth. Here and the legs are major entry points of prana in the body. All right. Here they're hinting at it. Although they have said the spleen is the main entry point of prana, here they're talking about um, is the emanations of matter. So if like we know, radiation of etheric matter. So it's not only actually radiation out, it's radiation out and energy coming in as well, okay? So I would like you to do this experiment. By the way, those of you who have done, uh, done Arhatic Yoga, there's actually uh, quite a bit to talk about it, but this is an open session. But many of you who've done Arhatic Yoga realize now the implication of the third breathing exercise that we do, where we are away, uh, aware after the breathing exercise, we're aware of a certain part, and the purpose of that is to collect the energy and then we fl flush it out of the body and be aware of the hands and the legs because that's the easiest part to radiate out of. All right. But there's a technique that Master Chua would teach us. It's, it's called the, I, I've not done it in a very long time, but this reminded me of it. I don't know why. I might be wrong because it talks about only the hands and the feet. But there's this technique called five point breathing technique or five something breathing technique. Um, wh why don't we just see what happens, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm just asking you to put your, put your hands on your laps and you have to sit straight. You, you're, you shouldn't preferably not be wearing any shoes. Um, so because the, the, the rubber uh, is an insulator of energy. So you have five points. You have one on the crown. You have two, three, and two soles of, soles, soles of the feet is four and five. Okay. So just relax. Just connect your tongue to your palate. Just be of your whole body. All right, be of your heart, smile at your heart. Be of your crown, then smile at your crown. Now be of your crown, your hands, and your feet. Your intention is on all five points. Be aware of the energy center there. Just relax, don't use any will. Just try and sense what's there. Now as you can sense what's there, just slowly inhale your normal breathing. But as you inhale, you're aware of these five points. And as you exhale, you're aware of these five points. You have your crown, your hands, your feet. Five points. Inhale. Exhale. Now let's try holding our breath before every inhalation and after every exhalation. So inhale slowly. Be aware of your five points, hold your breath. Be aware of the five points, exhale. Be aware of the five points. Hold your breath, be aware of the five points, inhale. Hold your breath, be aware of the five points, exhale. Be aware of the five points, simultaneously exhale. Just continue this for 30 seconds.
Okay. How is it? Did you feel anything? Yeah, I see some thumbs up. Was there any difference uh, in the five points and the way you do it? Interesting, no? <laughs> you feel your hands, your legs. I hope they were clean, by the way, <laughs> because if the feet are too dirty, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, should be okay. <laughs> we invoke for divine protection. All right, this is a powerful breathing technique. This is something that Masachua taught us called five-point breathing technique. Magnetic effect. Uh, yeah, we are doing book study. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Now you have to notice how your body is in the next few minutes, whether you feel lighter, what's happening is, it depends how sensitive you are. Okay, so these five points are very important points in the body. That's why for fever, infections, uh, uh, bone issues, actually almost everything we normally sometimes work on these parts. Okay, now uh, physical emanations of the body consists largely of finely divided salts appear to clairvoyant sight as multitude of tiny forms. Okay, all this part. Uh, the character of these tiny particles may be affected by loss of health, by a wave of emotion, or definite train or thought. So basically, what he's trying to say is they have been analyzing not only uh, uh, etheric discharge, but the etheric uh, component of physical discharge. Are you okay? So they're looking at the etheric component of a physical discharge. You know, just like you're looking at the physical component, it has an etheric envelope. When you sweat, for example, the sweat is physical, but it is, uh, it is um, there's an, uh, like a light whitish orange envelope surrounding the, each sweat bead. But you don't see etheric envelopes singularly like that. You see it as a whole um, curtain of um, orange. <laughs> All right, and this discharge, by the way, can be, like Sumi was mentioning the other time, it can be actually um, left on objects or left on uh, surfaces. Like for example, I remember in the US one time long ago, there are some fantastic clairvoyants there. Um, you know, in the States, many times after the gym, I don't know whether they still do it. I'm talking about like late 90s, 2000, 2005. They used to wear this fisherman net type of stuff. And even after gym, they go running topless, not the girls, but the guys, <laughs> okay, uh, obviously, uh, just to clarify. And uh, so the guys, after working out or they play basketball, even if they're wearing a shirt, they would just take their shirt off and they'd sit in the car, okay? They sit in the car and they just, uh, you know, whether they're a passenger or driver, both are, you know, half naked, topless, and then they go somewhere. And the guy got off and then another person who's very sensitive to energy comes in, looks at the seat, is like, whose orange is all over the seat? Because the guy was sweating and the sweat came, uh, was transferred onto the seat of the car. And so uh, he could see some orange there. That is why if you've noticed, uh, so, and now the color of that orange, I'm just using this as, a, as one example, but just to explain you. Now, if your diet is a particular way, the, the orange will be affected. If your emotions in a particular way, positive or negative, that color uh, for each person is different. And the way you think, the color is that different. And of course, apart from this, your meditational techniques also affect your quality of orange. For example, if you've done Arhatic Yoga, you look at a person just projecting orange. I'm now talking about etheric. Um, uh, for a person who's uh, Arhatic prep, compared to a person who is uh, maybe level three, uh, practicing and developing the golden body for some time, the orange produced from there and the orange produced by a prep is very different. So similarly, on the physical aspect, the orange produced by the uh, by each individual, and not just orange, but any discharge, whether it's mucus discharge, tears, um, um, or sweat, all those kind of things. Uh, so all these discharges. So now there are, there are times where, uh, of course, that's an exaggeration. Where certain discharge of a person is like gold to another person. So they say this saint come, came from the tears of this deity, but that has to do with something called permanent seeds and we won't talk about all that stuff. All right. Um, but just to tell you, this is what uh, it's talking about. So basically they're talking about discharge and with that, the chapter is over, but I will just, um, I will just summarize it. 
it's an interesting chapter. I didn't think it would be just to be you know, fair. Let me just share the screen real quick. Okay, no, that's not it. Went to the wrong um, chat again. All right, so we are here. Okay, we finished all this. We finished all this. So factors. So what are the now apart from this chapter? I wanted to also look at what are the factors that influence discharge. All right, they're talking about all the discharge. And remember, I, I spoke about last time the discharge is not either positive or negative. So your psychological state affects your discharge, right? Obviously. One second, just a moment. Okay, so your psychological state definitely affects um, your discharge. Why do we know that? Um, I'm not talking about, by the way, the, the physical part was just over. Forget about that. We're going back to summarize the whole um, chapter, looking at etheric discharge of the etheric body. Uh, emanations. Let's not use the word discharge. Let's use the word emanations from the uh, etheric body, right? Just to make it understandable. When a person is relaxed, happy, or smiling, there is a smooth and free flow of pranic energy. The circulation of pranic energy is improved. More pranic energy is drawn in and more used of pranic energy is expelled. All right. It is advisable to relax or smile while energizing since this will make the healer more powerful. All right. Um, more pranic energy can be projected. Now, there is a misconception that you have to smile when you're healing. For those of you who are healers, you have to smile uh, so that the flow, uh, the energy is softer and it can be penetrated by the patient. That is one level of truth. On, a, on another level of truth, the, when you smile, much more energy transfers out on a much higher quantity from the patient, from the healer to the patient. More pranic energy is drawn in by the healer, more pranic energy is drawn, uh, given out by the healer. So what does that mean? Your psycho psychological state affects all these various discharges that they were talking about, from the top, from the sides, from the pores, from the bottom. When you're in a relaxed state, you really, really, uh, the, the flow of prana is much more pleasant, much more pleasant. Is that okay? All right. Now, um, this is a very interesting experiment, uh, by the way. It's one of the principles of self-healing. Because if, uh, and, and um, the reason I put it as the first point is because it's one of the most important parts of maintaining good health. Because you might have techniques on rejuvenation. You might go to the gym. You might make your body healthy. But if your psychological attitude is wrong, the, the ability for you to draw in prana and expel out prana is severely affected. Okay? Will affect your discharge. Discharge. Okay, physical exercises obviously uh, are are an, uh, another influence that uh, another factor that influences discharge. So warm up exercise, dancing, sport, hatha yoga. You notice when people do that, there is more increased amount flow of discharge and also energy coming in. Okay. What are the other factors that influence discharge? Breathing exercises. They influence discharge in a very big way. Pranic breathing. Balancing breathing exercise, for those of you who know that, that really increases the size of your aura, expels out dirty energy. Even a technique, what we teach in Ahadi Yoga called Tiger Yawn, that really, really <laughs> amplifies the discharge coming out of the mouth. <laughs> All right, so the, one of the areas that was shown is the mouth. So that really amplifies the area coming out, uh, the discharge coming out of your mouth. Another thing is meditation. Meditation really, uh, of course, affects not only energy coming in, but it also facilitates in expelling of old used up energy. All right. That's why I've noticed many times in when people are doing a lot of self healing meditations or other meditations, they start to cough, they start to, uh, uh, you know, it's like they have to let out a lot of stuff, physical and etheric and emotional. Sometimes, you know, there's so much expelling of psychic constipation they're expelling so much that they actually even go physically to the toilet after the meditation <laughs> okay to actually discharge uh, anyway so as spiritual energy comes down through the spiritual cord in the crown uh, in the heart radiates out in the aura causing the turbulent noisy thoughts most to be flushed out so this increases the flow of discharge so it's one of the, another factor that influences discharge um, the factors that influence your sound. Sound affects the amount that is discharged by the body. 
uh, by a high, high degree. All right, mantras and vibration combined with will and intention. All right, so the mantra Om combined with will and intention of, uh, increase the discharge. I want to actually sue me here to validate. Maybe next time we'll talk about it. Um, I think if I remember correctly, uh, so, uh, I think one or two of them were asked to sit in front of Master Chua and chant the mantra Om Namah Shivaya Om. And uh, I think uh, their discharge was so much, Master Chua was saying, uh, why don't you imagine yourself, or he told them basically to uh, you know, expel the energy in another area, because he was right in front of them. So definitely mantras increase your amount of discharge. We'll let her give the story. Okay, I'll ask her next time. Uh, external objects also influence discharge. Here, this whole chapter is about discharge, so I thought, why not talk about factors that influence discharge, okay? So healing, um, healing obviously affects discharge, <laughs> okay, of energy. Uh, you, you have something called the uh, uh, cleansing of blood technique. You put in certain types of prana, and there's a tremendous amount of discharge. There's cleansing the internal the organ technique in advanced pranic healing. You put in a certain uh, prana, and it, uh, the, those factors influence uh, or cause a big discharge in the body. You put too much of that prana, it'll cause even physical discharge. <laughs> okay. Um, and of course, uh, herbs. Herbs also affect discharge. They draw out pranic energy. Crystals. Crystals also affect discharge. You can extract energy. You can uh, accelerate the amount of discharge. Uh, salt. Um, that also accelerates the amount of discharge, both positive or negative. That's why if you put too much salt on your body, you wait for too long, or you have a salt bath for too long, um, your body will feel weak because it removes the congested, used up energy first, and then it also removes the good energy. And then oils. Oils, either direct contact oil or smelling the oil. Both ways uh, affect how our factors going to discharge. Actually, we can go into each one of this, and each one of this would be like one one session, but. That is not the purpose of this um, talk. So I think we're done with that chapter. We know a lot about discharge. So we go to the next chapter, chapter 12. Okay. All right. Let me open it up. So we'll just go and look at this um, real quick. So this is the diagram for the tabulation of results. So this is basically a summary of all the uh, energy centers that was spoken about. And we have gone into a lot of detail with all of this. So it just shows from the sun, from the sun, if you remember, you have the ultimate physical atom, it's charged and it becomes a vitality globule, all right? Um, and then it enters to the spleen. Now here, like we noticed, there's a difference. When you see the spleen, there's not only one source, there are, there are at least three sources or four sources into the body. Okay, so the diagram is a little bit um, different. And we explained all of this, remember the rose red nervous system going out of the pores, we explain the base of the spine. And if you see the Shushumna Nadi is marked over there and the Ming Main is missing, we're going into the upper upper chakras and we explain each one. Remember the etheric, uh, etheric uh, alchemical center, the emotional alchemical center, and then the uh, spiritual alchemical center. And then uh, you have the heart and the heart center, uh, directly goes to the brain. Uh, I don't know whether you guys did the experiment. If you just energize the back heart, the crown will become big or the energy of the brain will increase, okay? Now, if you notice from the heart chakra, there's a dedicated meridian or channel that goes only to the center of the crown. Do you see that? There from the outer spokes, there's a different, uh, from the throat, it comes to the outer spokes, right? But between the inner spokes of the crown to the heart, there is a dedicated meridian. That is something that we use for when we do the meditation on twin hearts. And that is something we need to build as we uh, spiritually grow. More than that, we cannot talk about. That's why it's called twin hearts because from the 12th uh, petal uh, center, the heart, 
it goes not to the whole crown, but just into the center of the 12 part of the um, crown, from the heart to the crown, yeah. Okay, and then we have the navel with the abdomen. We explained all this and how it goes out and the throat. So it's pretty straightforward, okay. And here again, uh, oh, sorry, what did I do? So means mad. Okay, so here again, uh, we're looking at the chakras. And then you have a summary, a tabular statement, which just summarizes all the, all these um, chakras. And if you see eight, nine, ten, uh, they're not used in white magic. Um, and we explained uh, about how the diaphragm could be misused, if you remember. Uh, if you don't, please review the other um, uh, videos uh, where we spoke about how the diaphragm can be misused. You can actually uh, paralyze the diaphragm uh, if you know about the solar plexus. Uh, and the forehead can be misused, and then the ming min can be misused. The sex chakra, sorry, the sex chakra can also be misused um, if you know about them. So they've kept it hidden for now. So if you're looking at this, um, if you look at the chakras, it's very different from what we are used to. And I don't think it looks like this in my personal experience and in the experience that I've seen. The chakras don't really look like this. This is just good to uh, understand it from a two-dimensional perspective. But all the chakras, except for the spleen, are actually in one line. They don't go like that. They're not in a zigzag motion, all right? Uh, except for the spleen, which is inside the, uh, slightly more inside, all the other chakras, like these ones, like the crown, the forehead, the, the agnya, the throat, the heart, they're all in one line, all right? And uh, the throat chakra, of course, the spleen should be smaller because in most people, if you remember, it's half to one third the size or it changes. As a person grows older, the spleen center changes in size, but it's smaller than the other chakras. And um, what else? Yeah, that's about it. It's just showing you in a diagram form what this is all about. I will. Yeah, so that's it. Now I want to just summarize this whole uh, clear audience. I would, this this thing called understanding and this thing called co continuity of consciousness and the under uh, clairvoyance and you know I, I just want to explain this. So I'll just explain it uh, in a in a different way. So if you study, let's study knowledge. All right. If you're if you've done, um, if there's a difference between knowledge and understanding, okay? What is the difference between knowledge and understanding, all right? And what is the difference between understanding and wisdom, okay? Because if you look at this picture, it talks about, where did it go? It talks about uh, continuity of consciousness and it talks about understanding and the understanding is a little bit lower, so we'll just explain. Knowledge is basically accumulation of information. It is connected with the throat, accumulating or collecting details, all right, is throat. But accumulating information or the knowledge doesn't mean that you understand the principles behind it. You remember like uh, Indian system is known for, at least in the past, for mugging up or what we call cramming information. So they could tell you the whole definition word by word. I remember when I used to get uh, a mark cut off because I didn't use the exact words as the textbook. That is to do with knowledge. But I had no idea what I was writing. I just wanted to remember all the words. I mean, I had some idea, but the understanding of it wasn't there. Okay, so just accumulating information or knowledge doesn't mean that you understand the principles, all right? Understanding is connected with the abstract mental faculty, all right? Now, based on uh, pranic psychotherapy, if you've read the book or you've done the course, what center would be connected with knowledge or concrete intelligence, the throat? What chakra would be connected with understanding principles, essence, abstract ideas? That would be this Agnya chakra. Many people for thousands of years have been developing the throat from farming to painting to sculptures to carpentry to building the Taj Mahal. The details have been practiced. That's why many of the books uh, on uh, spirituality in the past are 
knowledge or um, throat chakra based, which means detailed based. So they, so the difference between someone, um, between a person who has knowledge and understanding, uh, remember I, I, I didn't speak about that abstract. The throat basically would be your, you have to give them examples or you have to give them stories for them to understand, just like kids, all right? You can't tell them one, you have to tell them one apple and then only they get it, all right? So that's why many of the, uh, many of the books like Mahabharata, or Mahabharata and the Bible and all these holy books are in story format. Behind the stories are of course deep, deep teaching, but people could only understand stories then, so throat, right? So when a person, but when a person has an abstract idea, or abstract concept of an idea, you see this person understands the matter, all right? If a person understands the matter in a concrete way, you say the person has knowledge. For example, a, pos a person would say, this is so-and-so hotel. I know it is, uh, I know here it is, uh, this is this, this is that, they have a nice lobby, they have a nice restaurant, they have uh, fantastic food there, you should order this, you should order that, make sure you order this for dessert. That is knowledge, all right? Um, but the person with understanding would say, ah, the hotel is nothing but a big, nothing but a big infrastructure made of steel bars, flooring made of corrugated steel, um, covered with concrete, etc., etc. People use it as a temporary residence. So the way a person with knowledge thinks, a person understanding is different. So what the author is trying to say is that, now we go into Kundalini, as you awaken your Kundalini, these uh, knowledge aspects, there are several layers of knowledge aspects and these understanding aspects, several layers, it's a matter of degree, will all start to awaken or what they call vivify. Okay, so like in what we learn in pranic psychotherapy, there's uh, abstract thinking, like understanding algebraic principles, understanding trigonometric principles, etc. Um, that is understanding. Knowledge would be, okay, a tree has leaves, branches, trunk, fruits, that, that is knowledge. Okay, it's brown, the trunk, it's green. It's connected with information. What is the popul of, uh, population of Australia? How many states are there? These are the information connected with concrete ideas or details. All right. This is uh, what they call dat in Kabbalah or throat, the hidden center. And it's also known as the bridge. Remember, we spoke about the incarnated, the higher soul and the incarnate soul. The neck is actually a physical bridge also. I mean, how is your head attached to the rest of your body? The head, which allows you to think, which allows you to feel, which allows you to do all these wonderful things, see, hear, how is this, and uh, you know, subtle, subtle uh, things, how is this attached to your body with the neck? So it's called throat, all right? Um, and the reason it's hidden, because this is the creative center, all right? Because when the dart of a person is highly developed, what they say, and once you vivify it with Kundalini and higher uh, techniques, what you say is, and what they say is not, is not, <laughs> all right? That's why in old books, and, or if you read these books like uh, Amar Chitra Kata and all that, if the guru blesses you, you have really a good life. You say, okay, you are blessed, uh, you have this for this, you're done, all right? Uh, <laughs> if they curse you, <laughs> Uh, you are in big, big trouble. <laughs> you remember Shiva curse is a 1,000 year curse, okay? Um, when a person is being blessed, one of the secrets is the throat chakra is being used to materialize and concretize the energy, all right? This is one of the reasons the throat is kept secret because it's very powerful. It, that's why it's called the abyss. Why? Because this higher center corresponds to the higher world. The lower chakras correspond to the lower world, all right? So the dat is like the interface or the bridge between the higher world and the lower world. It's your literal bridge, like your neck. All right? Uh, if you want to go to the lower world, you have to go through the dat. That is why it's called the abyss. All right? So the next question you should ask is, okay, okay. We know that, we know what is understanding. We know what is knowledge. What is wisdom? <laughs> okay? What is buddhic faculty or lower intuitional faculty? Not buddhic, but lower intuitional. Moses, for example, they say has wisdom. Right? He knows things without having to study it. All right? That is, uh, so that is, um, now I remember, intuitive intelligence, basically direct perception, direct inner perception. That is what happens to many scientists. They are very smart. They know the teaching already. They know the knowledge. They have the understanding. But, for, but sometimes, although they have the understanding of the principles, they have the knowledge, they keep getting blocked over and over again uh, on a problem. And they can't solve the problem. And after working on it mentally for several months or years, 
they're at a dead end, suddenly a vision comes to them. Just a vision comes to them, flashes into their consciousness. So what is that vision that comes to them? Where, where they see directly, that is wisdom. That is called intuitive intelligence. If you look at how did they get the answer, the method isn't logical. They can't tell you how they got it. It's, it just is. All right? And the person being intelligent will use the mind and use experiment to validate whether the direct perception uh, um, is correct or not. And this direct perception called vision is connected with the forehead. All right? This forehead also in advanced pranic healing affects physical vision. All right? um, so many people get that. They get, they get visions and then based on that, without studying everything, they know everything. Like when Master Choa, the founder of Pranic Healing, would talk to us, he, he said he saw the whole Pranic Healing and also the whole Advanced Pranic Healing book in just an instant. But he said to write it down took a long, long time. It's like transferring data to, from one computer to another computer. It's very fast. But you have to write down that data instead of just direct transfer, uh, energetic transfer. If you have to physically write down two terabytes of information, it would take a very, very long time. All right. So that is knowledge, understanding, wisdom. That's it for the day. Oh, I still spoke a lot. <laughs> I'll take about five, ten minutes. We can uh, uh, answer some questions if you have some. Um, if you want to talk, you can raise your hand and I'll unmute you. As if some energy is there, tingling, felt heavy, felt like there's a ping pong ball. Oh, that's a very, very, um, very sensitive. That's good. Um, all five points when healing. Oh, that's also really sensitive. Wow, some of you guys are. What about Shakti Pat? Shakti Pat. Is it discharged by Guru removing all the. Shakti Pat. Sumi is not here to stop me. Um, it has to do with the Kundalini and it has to do with acceleration of evolution of the body and of the soul and of the vehicles all simultaneously. It's multidimensional. It's not just one. It's not just, okay, etheric body discharge. It's multi, multi-level, multidimensional. I don't know whether we'll really talk about it, but we talk about it. Talk, ask me again in Kundalini when Sumi is around. Where do we access the previous recording? Ah, thank you, uh, guys, for pulling up. Why is there no connection between the throat and the Agnya? Agnya is controlling uh, all other. Yes, so some of the things are not very accurate. Um, there, um, in most people, the actual connection between the throat and Agni is quite weak. You have to build it. <laughs> you, you have to build it. Okay. Uh, there are techniques to build it. That is taught in Arhatic Yoga level one and two. But I don't know whether they know they're building it. Um, why is understanding correlated to heart chakra in this diagram? I have no idea. Maybe you have to be sensitive to understand someone. If you don't have the heart, you won't even bother on trying to understand a person, <laughs> actually speaking. You only want to understand something either when you want something or when the person is a loved one or when you care for them. So if your child does something, you want to try and understand what they did because you want to justify it and you want to listen to it and you want to uh, look at it and help them. But if it's someone you don't like, then you're not bo going to bother to really understand it. You're just going to, uh, yeah. <laughs> Is that little bone of the neck breaks one dies? Is there a link between skull and spine? Any connection with what we are studying? I have no idea. That sounds physical. <laughs> I don't think there's a... Shakti path is initiation. Uh, depends who's giving it. Why are you guys asking me about Shakti path all of a sudden? Uh, yes, it is an initiation. It is an initiation. All right? It is. Depending if a powerful teacher is giving you, definitely an initiation. But when, the, when Master Cho would uh, give a Shakti path, he called it Shakti path because if they call it initiation, he noticed uh, the, the heads of the disciples became so big they got a, you know, some, they have a two-ton head, so they fall flat on their face because the center gravity changes. They get very proud. I'm getting initiation today. Shakti path? Yeah, yeah, it's okay. It's just a pat of Shakti. <laughs> but yes, technically it's an initiation. That's what at least I heard from Master Chua once. 
in pranic and analytic yoga, we don't get Shaktipat. Is it necessary to get it from a guru? Uh, you do get Shaktipat. Um, of course, physically, which chakra is related to telepathy? Telepathy. The chakra related to telepathy. I already explained a little bit about it. Um, telepathy has to do with, that is a long discussion. Let's not get into that. It has to do with using astral particles and etheric particles passing through your various chakras, depending on what you want. Uh, usually it's the Ajna. Usually. Because that is the chakra to do with seeing and uh, understanding the message. Uh, when you told about five breathing technique, would you please repeat the five, five points? My network was bad. Five points. One, two, three, and the souls, I'm not going to raise my legs up, so four and five. <laughs> okay. Uh, is there also a bridge between the Ajna and the heart? There is a connection, a meridian, but um, not really, not really, because the heart has to do, uh, the heart has to do with the emotional body, the ajna has to do with the mental body, if you know uh, about the astral body and the uh, mental body. Fracture of one process hits vital areas. Thank you, Dr. Sigar, uh, Sagar. <laughs> we do get Shaktipat, how? Uh, whenever you get, uh, do, uh, if you're an arhatic yogi, whenever you do the meditation on the inner breath, do you think you're using only your energy to awaken the Kundalini? Uh, I don't think so. So there, there, it's not, you know, you have to, when you're studying, you have to remove this concept of this is this and this is that. You have to understand that there is a whole field of explanation and there are very degrees. You can't think in black and white. You can't think of whether someone has money or someone doesn't have money, all right? You have to see how much money a person has, right? Even the beggar on the street might have some money in the pocket, right? But how much money do you have? What is the quality of that money? Do you have it only in uh, assets or do you have uh, liquidity? So the quality of the money and the quantity of the money. So same thing when you're dealing with study, energy, always remember, don't get fixated. Is this Kundalini awakened? Not awakened. Is this uh, oneness? Not oneness. Is it, um, um, what else? How do we get the Shaktipat? No Shaktipat. There are various degrees of uh, Shaktipat. Now, if we have to talk about that, that doesn't really have to do with this topic. So maybe in an Arhatic session. Okay, because it, I have to talk about certain things. Um, is there special significance between the Sudarshan Chakra of Lord Vishnu? Is that the thing that they, they, they throw? Is that the thing on the finger? My uh, Hindi Sanskrit is not so great, but ah, that one. How many of you, uh, if you are Hatha Yogis, do you remember one time, uh, since I cannot talk about it, uh, in one of the retreats in India, Masachua was doing it like this, and he did that, and people felt their head and neck being cut off, right? Something like that. It's basically to, for you to let, anyway. Or it could be a super developed finger chakra. <laughs> Who knows? Okay, look at this. <laughs> right? Uh, okay, so um, why is throat called the hidden center? Ah, I explained that all this time because it can be misused. Okay, and um, because it's a center for materialization, concretizing physically. Once in Theosophy practice, there was a technique that made me feel that bridge between the Agni and the Bhakti. No, I don't know what Theosophy practice is, I have no idea. But you have to be aware when energy moves in the body, it's just circulating around. So it just may, there are connections. Okay. Uh, do you conduct a Rathic study session? I do not right now. Um, I just, I'm already doing four. I'm doing the understanding concretizing meditation for level one and above. And that is enough for taking, taking a lot of my time. And then there are four times a week. So that's, shall we end with a prayer? And I'll see you guys on Friday and we start Kundalini. Wow, we're really going fast. We're really on chapter 13 already. There's only 25 chapters in the book. So, what chapter is that? And we're done. All right. All right. So, just connect your tongue to your palate. Just relax. Inhale slowly and comfortably. Exhale slowly and comfortably. To the Divine Supreme Being, to the Divine Father, to the Divine Mother, we thank you for your priceless blessings. We thank you for your guidance, for your help, for your protection. We thank you for the wisdom, for the knowledge. We thank you for discernment. We thank you for accurate perception, correct expression. We thank you for helping us 
understand these deep teachings in a practical manner and helping us utilize its teachings to improve ourselves and the lives of other people. We thank you. To my beloved respected teacher, Atma Mahasa Chopo Sri, to Maha Atma Maha Guruji Mehling, to all the Maha Atmas, to all the holy gurus, holy saints, archangels, holy angels, beings of light, spiritual helpers, to our higher soul, to our divine selves, and to the angels of technology, to the angels of education, and all these angels and all the beings present, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your energy. We thank you for your divine guidance, help and protection, for wisdom and discernment. We thank you. With gratitude, with respect, and with lots of love, we thank you. Thank you. In full truth. All right. So that is that. Thank you for coming. Sorry, apologies. Sumi could not be here, but uh, um, I think we answered. How can we join your UFCM? That session is closed because we already started a month already. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, not with location. <laughs> Forget about it. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. So, Atma Namaste, guys. See you guys. And God bless. And I shall end the meeting for all. Let's see. Yeah.